All right, thank you, Mark. Joined again, oh boy, John Gibson. It has been an incredible year <laughs> for the BJSU Falcons. And by the word incredible, you can define that many different ways. Right. It's over. It's all over. Your immediate takeaway from this incredible season. Whew. Um, <laughs> I think the immediate takeaway is what could have been. I mean, you look at the meat grinder that the early season schedule was, that September through mid-October stretch, and, and you wonder – you know, if we'd had some of the depth, if we hadn't lost some of the guys in, you know, spring like we lost, or, you know, if the schedule had some kind of way magically had been flipped, would it, would we feel differently about this season? Um, I think it's just, I think it, it was tough. I mean, the kids gritted through it. As an announcer, it was tough. It was tough to go out there every week and watch and realize that we weren't playing up to the standard that had been laid down for Bowling Green football. Uh, I think that the kids did a good job of fighting through something, some adversity that they didn't cause for themselves um, and kind of rallying around and making something positive out of it. But ultimately, it just wasn't enough and it didn't live up to our standards. All right, John. So basically, let's just get right to it. We, we talked a little bit about last time, you know, I, I was here. Is who's going to take over? Has Carl Pellini earned the chance to be the next head coach of the BGSU Falcons? I, I, I don't think so. Um, I like Coach Bellini. Sure. You know, I think he's a very personable guy. Um, I just don't think that he gave us the wow factor of, you know, uh, taking over a program and taking it to new heights. I think he kind of gave us, you know, status quo. Um, and that's not his fault. I don't think that's his fault at all. I think he's a great guy. I think he'll bounce back. He's probably going to wind up coaching somewhere else next year, may even be a head coach somewhere next year. I just don't think that he sticks as Bowling Green's head coach. I think that he really would have had to have gone on a four or five game run in order to do that. And that's, again, that's a tough place to be put in because I don't think, you know, just my personal feeling, I don't think he wanted to be the interim head coach. I don't think that's what he necessarily wanted. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't, I think he may interview. I think, you know, they may give him a courtesy interview, but I don't know that he will be the guy when they have that press conference. Well, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about some names. We talked about Greg Stradawa down at Ohio State, former BJSU Falcon and assistant coach. Uh, we talked about some guys that you think might have a shot as well. Um, is there any more? I mean, I know that where they just got it done. Is there any more indication of where they might go? I, I haven't heard anything. Um, I actually had a conversation with Bob Mooseberger uh, Saturday. It was really funny because you know, I, I asked him, you know, simply, are you content with how the search is going? I didn't ask him for any names. I didn't ask him for anything specific. I didn't go all reporter on him. I simply <laughs> asked, are you content? Because I personally, knowing Bob, I trust that if he's content with the way that it's going, the nine times out of ten as another Falcon alum, I'll be content. And I think the rest of the Falcon Nation will be too. And I'll put that kind of trust in him. Uh, so I haven't heard any. It's like the Kremlin, man. There's no information coming out. <laughs> There's no information coming out. The Kremlin. <laughs> it's like no wow. information coming out of the Thebo Center. Uh, you know, Bob has done a, I mean, he's had six weeks now. I mean, you look at it like this. I really expect this announcement to be made tomorrow. Not, that I, not from inside information, but you look at like Western Kentucky. They fired their coach over the weekend and hired a new guy today. You know, we've had six weeks at this point to figure out who the next guy is going to be. And at this point, we really have it's, time, it's crunch time because you've got to get this guy in front of recruits. You've got to get him out on the recruiting trail. You've got to make sure that he's ready to lead this football team. So, I mean, I can see no later than Wednesday the announcement being made. And I have absolutely no insider information on who it can be. <laughs> there's names. I mean, there's one double A guys that I've heard. There's, you know, half the staff in Notre Dame, from what I've heard. You know, I, I heard that, you know, Luke Cage and Iron Fist are going to be applying for the job. <laughs> I, everybody really wants this job. So, I mean, but you think about it, it's a great job. You've got a quarterback in place. You've got pieces on your offense that are in place. You've got to fix some of the defense, but there are some pieces there in place. It's a great job to have because you can really walk in and have success right away. All right, John, so you mentioned half the staff at Notre Dame. One name that has cropped out there is is – uh, Brian Polian, son of Bill Polian. Uh, he is the Notre Dame special teams coach, also recruiting coordinator. We've had a former Notre Dame assistant <laughs> as a head coach at Bowling Green before. It's worked out pretty well. His name was Urban Meyer. He was your head coach. What's wrong with going back down that road? It's not Urban Meyer. True. To your point blank, you can't, 
you can't duplicate what Urban Meyer is. You know, you can go back to the university. You may even be able to give him the same haircut, but he's not going to be <laughs> Urban Meyer. With that being said, you know, I've heard that name, Brian Polian. Don't know a ton about him. Uh, of course, we all know his father was a legendary front office man in, in, in uh, the NFL. So, of course, he's got a football pedigree, a football background. He had a tough time as a head coach out in Nevada. Um, and some people believe that, you know, it's just his time to get a second shot at it. Uh, don't know what that does for the players. Of course, you know, he's going to have connections. He's going to be extremely well connected because his father's well connected, which is a good thing for players who have NFL aspirations that would kind of take care of some of the inter internal recruiting for some of those guys. Because from what I understand, there are some NFL prospects that are on the roster as, as of right now. Uh, but, you know, I don't know much about his personality, about, about his temperament, about how he's going to handle being the head guy at Bowling Green. I'm old school. You know, I want someone from our family tree to understand what it is we do. There's too many coaches out there in B, with BG letter jackets to not hire somebody within the family. But again, I told you, I trust Bob Looseberger. I think he's going to make the right decision. And if it happens to be somebody that's not from the family, then, you know, we're welcome with, with open arms. But we're going to be looking at them with a side eye until they produce. Yeah, well, I mean, as, <laughs> as you know, as we just mentioned, uh, they've had luck with that. Urban Meyer coming from Notre mm -hmm. Dame. Uh, obviously, Dave Clawson came in, and as well as Dino Babers. So mm -hmm. they have had success outside of the Bowling Green State University roots. Now, let's get you out on this. When you look back at the 2018 Bowling Green State University Falcons, what are you going to remember about this season? Well, I, I think, you know, letting Jinx go in the middle of the season is going to be the one thing that sticks out to me because I do think that with Jinx, we probably beat Kent. With Jinx, we probably win a few more games. Probably not enough to save Jinx, Jinx, Jinx job, mm -hmm. but we probably win a couple more games. But that's an unprecedented, unprecedented step in Bowling Green history. Even when Coach Blackney resigned, he resigned and stayed on until the end of the season. That, that probably is going to be one thing. I think you saw some toughness from Jared Dagey. You saw some toughness and some stick to from the rest of the team. You saw a bunch of guys really go out there and lay it out on the line when they really had no reason to. And so I think as crazy as this may sound, this could be a building year because at this point there's nowhere else to go but up. You know, these young men can only go up. They're going to have new leadership. They're going to have new direction. It's going to be new faces around the building, new coaches. And so at that point in time, you have no choice but to work harder mm -hmm. Because you having people, you have people to impress, and that always adds to it. I know that helped when Urban came around, because you know, you know, there's not, it's not easy impressing Dan Mullen. It's not easy impressing John Stadrow or John Hevesy or some of those guys that came over with Urban. Mm -hmm. So they're gonna put, they're gonna be evaluating every breath you take. Forget, you know, every lift. They're gonna be every time you right. breathe. Oh, he's breathing too hard. Let's right. go ahead and move him to the. <laughs> so you want to make sure that when you come in, you have an advantageous spot on that depth chart. And that's something these young men are going to have to fight through. So I think lead this season, if anything, can be the ashes that the Phoenix has to rise from. Or the Falcons in this case. <laughs> he is one half of the voice of the Bowling Green Falcon Radio Network football. That is John Gibson along with Todd Walker. And he's also a BCSN analyst. John, thank you so much. I know it's been a painful year. We'll give a little handshake right there. Mark, back to you.